Say, man, welcome to the first episode of Blood Brothers. Now, I know many of you may not know who I am, but my name is Anthony King. I'm the younger brother of Reggie King from the Road to Glory series. Look, I think they did a fantastic job chronicling Bro's journey to the NFL, but if I'm being honest, man, they left out quite a few details. So I figured why not pick up a camera and record my own journey. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, man, so listen, first and foremost, me and my brother were raised with both parents. Look, I don't know why my pops wasn't included in that little Sports Central show, but he was very much a part of our lives. As a matter of fact, he and my mom were high school sweethearts and they stayed together the majority of our childhood. Now, when my parents split up, bro and I went to stay at my dad's house and honestly, I think this is where my love for the game comes from. I mean, all he talked about was football. As a matter of fact, this dude had us doing two a days and studying film when I was in middle school. But look, Reggie and my pops never got along. It was always some sort of tension in their relationship. And quite honestly, as bro got older, things just seemed to get worse. Well, at one point, things got so bad that we had to go stay back in my mom's crib. Look, life in my mom's house was rough. If I'm being honest, bro, I felt like a stepchild or something. For some reason, I've always been closer to my pops and my mom knows that. So I think a little bit of the resentment she had for him, she ended up taking out on me. The lack of love and attention caused me to become rebellious and I found myself in a little bit of trouble with the law. I figured me getting locked up would take a little bit of the attention off Reggie and put a little bit on me, but <laughs> nah, it was the exact opposite. Out of nowhere, bro started going crazy on the field. I mean, this dude went from like a two-star, two-and-a-half-star athlete to being one of the top recruits out of LA. That's around the same time Sports Central came around and as you know, bro went on to do big things. But say after bro graduated and went to UCLA, all that attention he had transferred to me. Coaches knew football ran through our blood, so they wanted to see if I could take them to their second state championship. Man, I must have balled out my sophomore year. I mean, I was really laying it on them boys thick. First team all state, California all star team captain, the whole nine. We ended up losing in sub state that year, but I was confident we had all the pieces to win it next year. Well, <laughs> man, that's when this happened. What do you mean we're moving? I can't just up and change schools in the middle of the year. What about football? Look, Anthony, I'm not going back and forth with you. You heard what I said and that's final. We will figure everything else out once we get settled, but for right now, I need you to go look and see how many empty boxes we have left in that garage. Thank you. Bro used his NIL money to rent me and mom's a house out near the valley. Man, that one move would kill all my state championship dreams with Inglewood, and it would also make me ineligible to play at Campbell Hall since I transferred in the middle of the year. So in total, that meant no football my entire junior year. But listen, man, my time at Campbell Hall was horrible. I just couldn't relate to nobody there. I mean, everything seemed fake and superficial. Plus, we had to wear them dumbass uniforms. On top of that, our football team sucked like hot garbage. But say, man, I had lost pretty much all the hype I had by not playing my junior year. So when it came time to commit to a college, I didn't have very many options and the options I did have weren't very good. Well, <laughs> that's how I ended up here, Eastern Michigan University. All right, so look, now that y'all know the journey that I took to get to this point, we can actually get into everything that's happened since I've been here at EMU. But say, it's very important y'all stay tuned to the end of the episode because I think I'm going to need your help deciding on what my next move should be. Man, look, I'll be honest. I was totally against coming to this school. I mean, not because it's a bad place or anything like that, but I just have my mind set on catching passes and returning kicks at USC or Oregon. But I got to give credit where it's due. Man, my pops helped me change my mindset and develop a positive attitude. Big bro looked out in a major way. He rented me a pretty nice apartment about two minutes away from campus and he gave me his credit card to furnish the place and buy food. That way all I had to focus on was football. Reggie knew I wasn't the happiest about being here. That's why he told me to use this time to develop my game and build my body up for the pros. I took bro's advice and set out to do just that. During training camp, the coaches were very impressed with my play at practice, but they said it was a bit inconsistent. I'd make an amazing catch one play and then on the very next play, I'll probably <laughs> drop a wide open pass. So my goal while I'm here is to improve my route running and become a deep threat and also improve my ability to catch the ball through contact. I would start the season off as a third string receiver, but I wasn't really tripping because I knew I wouldn't be there long. Also, depending on the package, I knew I would get a chance to come in as a slot receiver. Plus, I'd be back returning punts and kickoffs. Man, kicking off the first game of the season, I knew if I was going to earn a spot in the offensive rotation, I would first have to make an impact on the kick returns. I told myself every time I touched the ball to try to take that thing to the house. 
But look, I wouldn't see the field again until midway through the second quarter where I would make the first catch of my young college career. Now, it's one thing I want you guys to keep in mind. At this point, I was just a freshman third string receiver. So for the first few games of the season, I couldn't run whatever route I wanted to or call for the ball every play. Nah, it don't work like that. But look, it's one thing my big bro and my pops always told me, and that's effort will get you seen on film. So whether my job was to be a decoy in the offense or a run block, I was going to give him my all. Man, at the beginning of the fourth quarter, I almost made a huge house call on a kick return, giving us excellent field position to start off the next drive. Now, this is where I would show I was a true student of the game. I was able to break off my route and find a huge hole in the defense to secure a big first down. Then on the very next play, knowing I had a step on my defender, I extended my route just a little bit and made the very tough catch, putting us right outside the end zone, which led to a two-yard touchdown, tying the game with only two minutes left in regulation. Now, luckily, our defense was able to come up with a huge stop and put the ball back in our hands with only one minute left in the game. Now, of course, I wanted to be the go-to receiver on this drive, but I knew it wasn't quite my time. Instead, my boy Hassan would come up with a huge 46-yard reception, giving us excellent field position, which led to a very strange fumble recovery in the end zone for the win. Your boy would finish the game with five receptions for 79 yards and two huge kick returns. Hey, not bad for a third-string receiver. The next game would be verse number 21 ranked Penn State at their house. Say, man, I can't lie, seeing all those fans have my stomach in a knot. I was a little bit nervous, but I knew it was finally my time to take stage. This game, I would get a chance to see the field in the first quarter. I came up clutch on a few fourth downs, but it was strange because after I made those big plays, I would immediately be sent to the sideline. I was there to do my job and help the team out in whichever way I could. Now, they did seem to struggle to move the ball without me on the field. Then right on cue, I line up in that slot position and bail us out of trouble. Well, eventually towards the end of the first quarter, all my contributions would lead to an 11-yard pass and touchdown giving us the lead on the road. My confidence was extremely high at this point and I really started to feel like I was becoming a reliable weapon for our offense, but <laughs> that confidence would get me in trouble as calling for the ball would lead to a big interception by the Penn State defense. Now, quite honestly, I felt like the quarterback could have did a little bit better job leading me on the route, but I learned quickly about accepting accountability as the coach would put me on the sideline next to him for the rest of the game. I went on to finish with seven catches for 69 yards and we suffered our first loss of the season. We traveled to New Jersey to take on Rutgers our next game. This is what I would consider my coming out party. I mean, even though I considered the two guys in front of me my boys, I knew I was a lot better than them and it was finally time for me to show it. My play at practice and in the first two games of the season proved my ability to not only be able to read the zone defense, but to beat it. And I did just that. It would be in this game I would come up with my first collegiate touchdown off of a dig route to the back of the end zone. My play would be the only bright spot in this game as we went on to lose, mainly due to the three interceptions thrown by our quarterback, Cam. But after this game, I would meet with the offensive coordinator and he would let me know I had officially secured the second receiver spot on the depth chart. Say, man, listen, if last game was my coming out party, then this was me sending a message to everybody in college football that I'm really that guy. I had the confidence not only within myself, but from my coaches and teammates as well. I mean, even though technically I was still the second receiver on the depth chart, it was clear that every time Cam dropped back to make a pass, I was his first option. Now, we hadn't quite built the chemistry of me being able to completely make up my own routes, but I sure as hell was breaking off the original route and carving up the defense. This would lead to several big gains and a couple touchdowns, not to mention I was able to break the school's single game receiving record as well. I was having a field day and the Ball State defense clearly didn't have an answer for me. But with all that being said, man, we would still go into overtime and take a heartbreaking loss at home on what should have been a wide open touchdown. But as you can see, man, Buddy stepped right out of bounds. Man, look, after a huge game at home and breaking the school receiving record, it was a no brainer that I moved up the death chart to the number one spot. It was officially my team and I didn't give a damn how anybody felt about it. Look, at this point, it's clear why I came here. It was to get better and increase my stock, so when it was time to jump in the transfer portal, I'll have more options than I did coming out of high school. But it seemed like once I got the keys to the offense, my focus changed. I went from just wanting to be seen and stuff the stat sheet to actually wanting to win, and that energy became contagious. Not only on the field for game day, but in the locker room, on the practice field, in the classroom, everywhere. The Buffalo game would not only be the start of a winning streak, but the start of a cultural shift here at Eastern Michigan. That shift I just mentioned would stay with us for the remainder of the season, and trust me, it would definitely be needed. In the next game versus Army, we would face adversity late in the fourth quarter as a miscommunication between me and Cam led to a pick six. 
And then on the following kick return, I would go down with the injury causing me to miss the remainder of the fourth quarter. Say, man, the team would fight back strong and send the game into overtime. Now, y'all know it ain't no way I was just going to sit on the sideline and watch my guys fight for the win. I came through clutch near the red zone for a 19-yard reception. All the pain I was feeling from that stinger I had just suffered earlier in the fourth was setting in, but I ain't give a damn. I immediately called for the no huddle and lined the team right back up to go for the win in overtime. The defender had the curl route shut down, so I broke off into a slant and Cam had the ball right there waiting for me. We would go on to win the game in overtime and send them army boys back to the base with the L. Say man, look, the team was in a very good spot and I was finally getting the attention I had always wanted. Now I'm not going to act like people was just screaming my name all across the world, but hey, I was kind of a big deal here in the Mid-American Conference. I had one player of the week three weeks in a row and we finally started to turn things around. But say in our conference home game versus Ohio, it was almost like the defense was non-existent. I mean, our team chemistry was at an all-time high and it literally looked like a game of pitch and catch. We would jump out to an early lead and never look back. I think I went for like three tuds and 250, 220 yards, something like that. Anyways, I was in my bag, bro, and it was clear that the defense could do nothing to stop it. Of course, we went ahead and took the blowout win at home and moved forward to the next week on the road versus Northern Illinois. Now, I know their stadium may not be the biggest, but hey, it's definitely the nicest in the Mid-American Conference if you ask me. But I would come out looking to set the tone early with a huge 55-yard kick return. Say, I had to let them boys know that, yeah, we may have lost a few games, but we certainly still had that dog in us. We would go down to score on the first drive of the game, giving us the 7-0 lead. And then, of course, our defense would do what they do, getting a stop. But look, I was on a punt return looking to make magic happen. But instead of magic happening, man, tragedy set in as I would go down with the gruesome season-ending ACL injury. Now, obviously that wasn't the way I wanted to finish the year. Just as we started to pick up momentum, I went down with a season ending injury. But luckily I'll be able to make a full recovery and be back 100% for next season. But say, this season wasn't a total waste. I was voted to the freshman All-American team for the entire NCAA. I also finished seventh in total overall receiving yards. I think I made several improvements in my route running and my ability to high point the ball. But most importantly, I increased my stock in the transfer portal. Say, man, I need y'all help. Should I stay here at EMU and try to build something with the new incoming recruits? Or should I jump in the transfer portal and weigh out my options? Man, I can't lie. I'm loving what Coach Prime is doing down in Boulder. But, hey, I'll let y'all decide. Comment down below and let me know what my next move should be. I know y'all probably already heard the news and read all those headlines about me being kicked off the team, right? Man, listen, you can't believe everything you hear. Those news outlets almost never tell you the truth and those headlines never give you the full story. But luckily I started this series so I could tell y'all exactly what happened. So we gonna get into everything, but listen, I need you to watch to the very end of this episode. That way you get the full story with all the details. Man, let's get started. So at the end of last episode, I found myself at a crossroad. Either stay here at EMU for another season or test out my luck in the transfer portal. I had been praying for a sign telling me what my next move should be, but when I finally got that sign, man, it was way more than I had bargained for. While I was recovering from my ACL injury last season, I ended up meeting Amari at one of my physical therapy sessions. Say, man, she's super cool. I mean, down to earth. And she loved football, so y'all know we bonded off rip. But listen, I spent most of my time with her. We'd either be watching bro do his thing with the Raiders on Sunday, or <laughs> we'd be studying. Yeah, <laughs> studying. But listen, man, y'all should already know what happened next. She hit me with that late text. You know that late text, that I think I'm late text? Yeah, bro, it was official. Your boy found out he had a baby on the way. With Mari being pregnant, man, there was no way I was leaving EMU. And I knew football was no longer just a game. Nah, this would be what I used to feed my family. I told myself if bro can make it to the league, then so could I. Man, I took my training to a whole nother level, both in the gym and on the field. When spring practice came around, this would be my first chance to get a look at this year's team. Honestly, it wasn't too many new faces. For the most part, it was the same exact squad we had last year. Now, that would be both good and bad. It would be good because our core foundation was still intact and we had already built a little bit of chemistry together, but bad because last year we weren't very good. But listen, one of the new faces on the team would be our offensive coordinator, Coach Larry June. He was coming from some Juco college somewhere in Kansas. I mean, dude was a straight up weirdo. I don't know, man. He kind of seemed full of himself, but I just told myself to focus on doing my job and the rest will fall in place. Anthony, please tell me your brother lying and you ain't up there got some girl pregnant. Have you lost your mind? 
I can't believe, you know what? No matter of fact, I can't believe it because only you would do some stupid shit like that. You don't know what you done got yourself into, boy. Call me back right now. Call me back. I had decided not to tell my mom about Mari being pregnant until the end of the season. Instead, I just told my pops and my big bro. But I don't know why I told Reggie because dude can't keep his secret to save his life. But say, man, now y'all see why I decided to keep the news from her. Anyways, I just used her reaction as added motivation to ball out during the season. But look, man, I'm finna show y'all what led to the argument between me and the offensive coordinator and me eventually quitting the team. Stay tuned. All right, so look, the first game of the season was versus number 19, Florida. Now, we all know to them, this was nothing more than a warm-up game. But to us here at EMU, man, it was like a Super Bowl. Bruh, listen, I'm only gonna show y'all one highlight from this game because honestly, that's all there really was. We got blown out by like 40 points. It was mad embarrassing, but hey, we just gonna keep it moving. The next game would be at home versus FCS Midwest. Somehow they had already lost four games on the season, so honestly, we just expected to walk right through them. Now, I did struggle early on with my matchup versus a very experienced corner, but hey man, it wouldn't be long until I was right back on the field making plays for my team. But say, it would be in this game that I would start to see there was definitely gonna be a problem with the new offensive coordinator. I mean, we drive the ball all the way down the field, right at the goal line to position to score, but for some reason their best offensive player, me, was on the sideline with a water bottle in his hand. Of course, we wouldn't score and we'd have to settle for a field goal, but I mean, I wasn't tripping. Now, the first time that happened, I didn't think anything of it. I went right back out there and made another huge play for my team. Then somehow we weren't able to convert on a third in inches and we had to settle for yet another field goal. At this point, I was pissed, but I didn't say anything. We went on to win this game 12 to three and I was only targeted five times the entire game, but hey, we won, so I wasn't tripping. Going into the Michigan State game, both Cam and I were on the same page. See, we knew this would be our chance to put on a show in front of a huge crowd and in the nationally televised game, but the OC was still on his BS. Yet again, I'd make a huge play and put us in position to score, then immediately I'd be taken out and forced to watch the action from the sideline. Honestly, I didn't know what to think of this. I didn't know if Buddy had something against me or if I was just taking things too personal. Either way, I didn't like it. But look, with just about a minute left in the first half, we put together a few quick completions to get a first down and stop the clock, and then we were able to find our way into the end zone, cutting the lead down right before halftime. Only down nine points midway through the third quarter, our defense was able to get a huge stop. The ball was back in our hands, and I was ready to go down and get a tud, but just like I've been trying to tell y'all, man, I make a huge play, then be put right back on the sideline. This time, it would be for three consecutive plays. I'd be watching and unable to make an impact. I was pissed and I knew something had to change, but for the time being, man, it was still more football to play. Man, I came down on the next possession and showed these boys why I was a preseason All-American. I ran every route I was given with precision, and when we got up to the goal line, I come up with a huge play for the touchdown. Then on the very next play, I snagged a two-point conversion, bringing us within two points to tie in the game. 26 seconds left and a chance to win, man, it was time for me to take stage. I ain't give a damn what nobody was talking about. I wasn't coming out the game. And if the ball was being thrown, it for sure had better been coming my way. But say, me and Cam was already locked in. I mean, we had prepared for this exact moment several times all throughout the summer. Nine seconds left on the last play of the game, the ball was in my hands, but I come up just short of the touchdown. And with no timeouts left, man, we had no choice but to sit and watch the clock hit zero. After the Michigan State game, man, I was furious. I mean, not only did we lose, but the play calling was horrible. I was on 10 and ready to run up in the coach's office with the AR, but Big Bro calmed me down like he always has. He told me to just chill, give it one more game, and if things don't change, then I should reach out and have the conversation. So that's what I did. I came out focused versus our in-state rival, Central Michigan. As a matter of fact, man, this would be my best game in college so far. After that talk with Bro, man, my mindset had shifted and I was just ready to get back on the field and handle business. The campus was buzzing for rivalry week and the team seemed to be fired up as well. Hey, that's the perfect combination to go get a dub. But we would face some adversity early on. It all started with a big hit by the Central Michigan defense that caused a fumble. That put them right outside the red zone where they would go on to score. And then on our very next possession right before the end of the first half, man, Cam would throw a pick six, giving them the 13 point lead. I couldn't believe how quickly things had gotten out of hand, but hey, players make plays, right? 39 seconds left on the clock was just enough time for us to move the ball up the field. The sideline would become my best friend. I mean, almost every catch on this drive would end with me going out of bounds to stop the clock. I would make back-to-back -back big plays to put us inside the red zone, and just like before, man, I was right back on the sideline watching all the action. 
We weren't able to connect on a touchdown, so we would settle for yet again another field goal to end the first half. At this point, man, two things had become obvious. If I was going to get into the end zone, it definitely wasn't going to be from a design play. Nah, I was going to have to get yards after the catch and force my way into the end zone. And also, I knew I was going to have to have that talk with the OC after the game. I had took everything bro told me into consideration, but at that point, man, the way I was being used in the offense wasn't only affecting me, but it had started to affect the team. We found ourselves in yet another close game, and when the team needed me the most, I was on the sideline. At this point, man, the other players started to get pissed because they knew just like everybody else knew. If we was going to win, I needed to be on the field. Fourth and goal, coach and the OC finally came to their senses and put me in the game, and I did what I do. Snagged the game tying touchdown to send us to yet another overtime, where I would come up clutch yet again for the game winning touchdown. Hey man, listen, I put up video game like numbers to pull off this victory, but honestly, I was like, forget all that. I needed to go talk to the man upstairs. You know, you've got some nerve coming in here questioning me about my play calling. Maybe if you actually ran the route that was called instead of doing your own thing, you'd actually see the end zone more often. Whoa. <laughs> Look, coach, man, I didn't mean any disrespect. I just figured maybe you we just could... figured what? Huh? What'd you figure? You figure you could just do whatever you wanted to do and make a mockery of the offense? Not here. Not while I'm in charge. Hey, man, everybody watching this video should already know what happened next. It wasn't a single object left unturned in his office after I got finished. When the campus police showed up, man, I started to get busy with them, but I was outnumbered, so I kept my composure. But listen, man, they followed me back here to my apartment to pack things up. I'm officially no longer a student or a player here at EMU. Man, I'm sorry if I let y'all down, but it is what it is. Say, man, my life been a roller coaster this past year. A few ups and a lot of downs. But look, since we family now, I'm going to take y'all through everything that's happened. But I do need two things in return. First, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And lastly, I need you to watch to the very end of this video. That way you don't miss anything. So with that being said, let's get into it. All right, so look, the last time we talked, I had just gotten to that fight with the coach over at EMU. I was officially no longer a part of the team and not allowed back on campus. Now, in the moment, I felt like my reaction was justified, but that 42 hour bus ride from Michigan to Vegas gave me a lot of time to rethink things. And yeah, I definitely overreacted. But look, bro did his thing during his rookie season with the Raiders. So that summer, he went and bought a nice ass mansion out in Vegas. I mean, this place was huge. And it's so crazy because, I mean, we both come from food stamps and government housing. Anyways, when I got there, it was during the regular season. So that meant bro was always on the road traveling to away games. Man, his cars became my cars. His mansion became my mansion. I mean, I was literally living like a pro athlete. I honestly don't think bro even cared. I mean, this was literally the life we dreamed of as kids. But I think my mom and his agent got in his ear. They painted me out to be some sort of distraction or liability to bro's career. And before I knew it, I was being asked to leave. It was at this moment that I found out that just because you related to somebody, it don't make you family. My own flesh and blood put me out in the cold with just enough money to get a rental. Then Amari sent me some money on Cash App for gas. I was headed back to Michigan. I hid out in her dorm room at EMU because remember I wasn't allowed back on campus. While she was at school, I'd pretty much just be chilling playing Madden. Then when she come home, I'd leave and go out searching for a job. Bro, I put in hella applications, but nobody would give me a chance. Well, that was until I got the call back from Chick-fil-A. I started off making $10.75 an hour. They had me on the drive through at first, but then I guess you can say I got promoted to working on the line. Man, I was miserable, but I was doing what I had to do because remember, I had a baby on the way. Man, I stayed at Chick-fil-A for a good four months. I mean, I literally didn't do anything but go to work and then go to the gym. The little bit of money I was making was going towards food for Mari and I or straight to my shoebox savings. Say, bro, I was proud of myself. In that short amount of time, I stacked up like seven racks just from going to work every day. But it wouldn't be long until I was back on the road. But this time, I had baby with me. Yeah, she thought it would be a good idea for us to move in with their parents in East Lansing. Man, this would be the start of a new beginning for me. Amari's pops got me a job at this lumber mill he managed over on the south side of town. Man, when I first got there, I was working like 12 hour shifts. And honestly, I didn't really mind it because it wasn't much else to do. But say, I ain't like them forklift drivers. I guess because they had their forklift certifications, they felt like they was better than me or something. But anyways, Mari's parents embraced me like I was one of their own. Now, don't get it twisted. They were still pissed I got their daughter pregnant, but they knew I was a hardworking, good guy and I meant well. 
But say, it seemed like the closer I grew to my in-laws, the further I grew apart from my real parents. Me and my mom would only talk every so often, and when we did, it always seemed to end in an argument. And then my pops had just got remarried and started a new family, so he acted like he didn't have any time for me and my problems. Alright y'all, so look, we're gonna jump ahead a little bit and get into how I ended up here at Michigan State University. I had been working that job every day faithfully and things were going well, but it was about that time I made my way back to the field. It was only about two months left until my son was set to be born and I was more motivated than ever. Mari and I transferred our credits over from EMU to Michigan State and at that time in my head I was done with football. I was planning on just getting my degree, getting a job and taking care of my family. But me and big bro were finally back on good terms and he convinced me to get a game another shot. Man, look, I had did my thing and made a decent name for myself over at EMU, but after the coach there ran my name through the mud, the coaches here were hesitant to give me a scholarship offer. So bruh, I not only had to try out for the team, but I also had to join the team as a walk-on. But luckily Reggie looked out and paid my tuition for the first semester, so I didn't have to take out any student loans. But say, things were different here at MSU. It wasn't no getting no apartment off campus. Nah, they demanded I moved into the dorms. This would be good so I can get out of my in-laws house, but it kind of sucked that I would be away from Mari and my son. Now, although I was among the top rated overall on the team, bruh, I still started the season off as the sixth string receiver on the depth chart. Man, listen, I had a lot to prove coming into this year and quite honestly, I still do. But after a crazy journey, man, I was blessed to be able to find myself back on the roster of a D1 college football team. All right, y'all, so look, I'm on my way over to the training facility for my physical therapy session. Yeah, you're going to see why I'm in physical therapy here in a second, but say, I'm not going to be able to record or be on my phone while I'm in there getting worked on, so while I do that, I'm going to fill y'all in on everything that's happened throughout this season. All right, so look, as y'all know, I came into the season as a six-string receiver, so obviously that meant I wouldn't have a chance to see the field very often. As a matter of fact, I didn't play at all our first game versus Western Michigan. But coming out versus South Florida, we would go into that spread formation and I would be wide open down the seam scoring my first touchdown as a Michigan State Spartan. Although I would only get that one offensive snap I scored on, this game meant so much to me because I had finally, finally, finally started a new chapter of my football career. The next game we'd be on the road taking on a very tough Notre Dame team. Now listen, I need y'all to be patient with me, okay? As I mentioned before, this was my breakout season, but first, I had to earn a spot in the rotation. So for the first few games of the season, I was barely playing and only getting a few looks here and there. But I gotta be honest, man, I really enjoyed playing that slot receiver position. But look, man, your boy was trying to make an impact in whatever way I could. I was coming down on the kickoff looking to make a big hit and got smacked. Hey, man, I guess you could consider that my welcome to the Big Ten moment. Anyways, we went on to secure the victory and your boy ended up with just the one catch for 26 yards. I got into the game late versus Iowa and ended up making Sports Center. We were down on the road and in need of a big play. My number got called so y'all know I stepped up and took stage. I broke off a 67 yard run up the sideline, breaking multiple tackles and sending a message to my teammates and coaches that I had that dog in me. That run would set up a quarterback keeper which would bring us within six. Our defense would get a stop on the next possession and we would steal a victory in a very close game on the road. We were 5-0 and and ranked number three in the nation. We had all the attention of the college football world on us. That was the perfect time for me to have a huge breakout game. Look, I promised myself that if I got a second chance, I definitely wouldn't need a third one. I was going to take full advantage of every opportunity given to me, and in this game, I would do just that. Look, at this point, I knew it was bigger than just me. Now, I had a family to look after, so if it was smoked, then so be it. I wasn't turning down or shying away from no matchups. Before this game, I knew I wasn't on anybody's radar. But I promise you, after this game, opposing defensive coordinators knew who I was. My consistent play on the field took me from the sixth receiver on the depth chart all the way up to the third spot, officially making me a starter. Look, I spent a lot of time in the film room. I requested the footage from each game this season, and I not only studied on what I did well, but I also focused on the areas I can improve on. I didn't know that the coach actually monitored our film time, and when he seen how many hours I had put in, he pulled me aside after practice one day to tell me how impressed he was. My first game as a starter would come at home versus a very solid Purdue team. Now, we were ranked number two in the nation, so that meant everybody we played against would be bringing their A game looking for the huge upset. 
But say, now that I was a starter, opposing teams would actually start implementing game plans to prevent me from making big plays. Not only that, my quarterback Peyton and I didn't really have a chance to build any real chemistry. I mean, we had only practiced together a handful of times, so neither of us were quite used to the other's tendencies. I spent most of the first half as just a decoy in the offense. The attention that I demanded freed up my guys Jaden and Keon to make huge plays over the top of the defense. It wouldn't be until the third quarter that I got my first reception, but hey, I wasn't tripping at all. See, at this point, I had fully bought into the team first mindset, and I was basically willing to do whatever to secure the victory. But look, man, y'all should already know I wasn't leaving the game empty-handed. I was able to get behind the lazy Boilermaker zone coverage and snag my first touchdown of the game, giving us the seven-point lead heading into the fourth quarter. That lack of chemistry I had mentioned before between Peyton and I almost cost us the game. On what would be our final offensive drive, man, he would pass my way on three separate occasions, each of which almost ended in the interception. Well, as a matter of fact, man, the last pass did end in the interception, but luckily our defense would come up big late and secure the win at home, protecting our undefeated record. We were now officially the number one team in the nation. Say, man, the last time I was a part of a winning program was back in high school, but nah, this was a whole different level. See, when you're winning in college, you're literally treated like a celebrity. Now I finally understand what it meant to be the big man on campus. It's one thing for your classmates and teammates to treat you like a star, but when the teachers and locals start to treat you like one, man, it hit different. But look, I couldn't afford to get distracted though. I had Mari and my son back at home, so I knew to keep the main thing the main thing. We would go on to win the game on the road to Illinois, but it would be my play that stood out from everyone else's. The team had quite a few injuries, and although we were undefeated, Bruh, we was exhausted, both mentally and physically. This would result in very sloppy play on both sides of the ball, which then caused us to be in several close games versus teams that, quite frankly, weren't even on our level. But listen, man, on the last play of the game with literally one second left, a bit of miscommunication between me and Peyton would result in a touchdown. I put up video game like numbers that led to me winning player of the week for the third time this season. The biggest game of the season was finally upon us, Michigan versus Michigan State. Man, this in-state rivalry always produces fireworks. Not only that, but both of us were ranked inside of the top 10. Plus, it was our first time rocking the neon uniforms, and you know I was feeling good. Listen, man, you look good, you play good. You play good, they pay good. Come on, man, you already know what it is. I had officially taken over the second string slot on the roster, and man, I was giving them boys havoc on the left side of the field. Man, look at the way I embarrassed this defender on this play. Hey, y'all ever heard of the saying, you reach, I teach? Well, same thing applies here. He tried to jump the route, so I beat him over the top for the huge game. We had the three-point lead with 30 seconds left in the third. Then my guy Peyton was able to throw another six points on the board with the quarterback keeper. But just like I expected, this game would turn into a shootout. Michigan would go down and score on their next possession, and then we throw an interception, giving them the ball right back. Down by four points with just two minutes left in the game, man, it was time for me to take stage. I called for the ball on this go route thinking Peyton would put it out for me to go get, but it was underthrown for yet another interception. I took some of the responsibility on this play because I shouldn't have called for the ball in double coverage, but nonetheless, our winning streak was snap and we give up a game at home versus our in-state rivals. Coming off a very tough loss at home, we'd be on the road the next week versus Nebraska. This was our first snow game and bruh, I was amped. As y'all know, I'm a Cali boy, so the snow was new to me, but to everybody else, it was no big deal. Anyways, after I lost to Michigan, we had dropped down to number three in the nation and still very much in playoff contention. If anything, I feel like that loss was a wake-up call to the whole team. Honestly, I feel like it was actually needed so we can get back to the basics and back to doing the things that had us ranked number one in the first place. We started to pull away in this game and I was really having my way with the defense. Peyton and I have finally built up our chemistry, so honestly, bro, we was just going through the motions. But look, I would take a handoff on a sweep play to the right side of the field. I picked up the easy first down and broke a tackle as I was headed out of bounds, but unfortunately, I would go down in excruciating pain as I injured my right shoulder on the play. Hey, come on, we're gonna be late. All right, man, I'm coming. Give me just a second. Hey, man, look, the big night is finally here. In just a few hours, we're going to find out who's taking home this year's Heisman Trophy. Man, I always dreamed of being up on that stage and having my name up in them lights. Who knew I'd be able to take things this far? But say, man, we got about a 45-minute drive from here to the ceremony. So I'm going to fill y'all in on everything that happened since the last time we talked. 
All right, so look, we're going to pick up from where we left off last episode. Now, if you remember correctly, I was headed to the training facility to get some work done on the injury I had suffered during the Nebraska game. Well, I was forced to sit out the next two games due to that injury, but my teammates held it down and got the dubs in my absence. We were the number one ranked team in America and strong favorites to win the national championship. But first, we had to win our conference championship. Look, we take on Wisconsin at the Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis, but unfortunately, our starting quarterback Peyton wouldn't be playing as he suffered an injury in practice the week before. Man, I did everything I could to try to get us to a victory. We fell behind early, but my team rallied back late to send the game into overtime. But unfortunately, we come up just short and Wisconsin was going home with our championship. I had myself a very solid year. I ended the season top 10 in receiving yards in all of college football, and I made the Big Ten first team All-American list. But say, with my success on the field came a little recognition off the field. I landed my first NIL deal with the local Lansing car dealership. I was just required to do one commercial and a little bit of promo on social media, and then before I knew it, I was getting a bi-weekly check. But listen, I gave the majority of that money to Mari's parents to watch my son over the summer. Although I didn't want to be away from my shorty, I definitely couldn't turn down the opportunity I was given. Big Bro invited me and Mari to Vegas for the summer. Now, for Mari, it would be a vacation, but for me, it would be a chance to train with one of the best receivers in the NFL. As y'all know, Reggie is QB1 for the Raiders, so obviously he and Devontae Adams are super close. Man, I got the opportunity to spend some time training alongside them, and bruh, I soaked up so much game over the summer. DA gave me a few tips and tricks on how to beat the corners off the line and how to gain separation and man coverage. I will go on and use a lot of those pointers he gave me over the course of my season in Michigan. But say, it was almost time for me and Babe to head back, and me and my mom still hadn't had a real conversation. Well, one day, Reggie and Mari left to go to the grocery store, and, <laughs> well, that left me and my mom there alone to talk. Anthony, it just blows my mind that after all I've done for you, you still feel like I don't love you. Yeah, you provided for me. Great. But where was the love? Where was the affection? Look, son, you're not a kid anymore. It's time for you to grow up and be a man. Grow up and be a man? Really? Well, when are you going to tell Reggie to grow up and be a man and stop treating him like a two-year-old? I knew that this was what that was about. I knew it. You jealous of your brother and you always have been. Man, I don't even know why I'm wasting my time trying to have this conversation with you. Instead of taking accountability for being a horrible mother to me, you try to turn it into something that's not. Man, you never gonna change. Look, whatever, Anthony, I'm too old to change. And if you can't see how much I love you, then that's something you'll have to take up with God. Well, as y'all can see, man, the conversation between me and my mom was interesting to say the least. Look, at that point, I just accepted the fact that our relationship wasn't gonna get no better than what it already was. I decided to keep my distance the rest of the trip and just enjoy my time with bro and Mari. But look, vacation was over and it was finally time to get back to work. I was now officially the number one receiver on the team and it was my senior year, so y'all know I wasn't playing no games. Man, look, I came into training camp in mid-season form. I didn't look at the football as just a football. Nah, see, it meant so much more to me. To me, the football was my dreams, my son, my girl, my future, my family. So I refused to let it hit the ground the entire camp. I mean, every pass that was thrown my way ended up as a completion. But say, the media heard about my off-season training with AD, and they asked me about it during a preseason press conference. I not only let them know how much better I had gotten since then, but also I let them know my goals for next season. Look, man, I know a lot of y'all may not believe in me and this team, but that's okay. Just remember to keep that same energy. I feel like we have a lot of key pieces returning from last year, and I truly believe we got what it takes to compete for a national championship. Not only that, I feel like I'm one of the best players in college football, so don't be surprised when you hear my name in that Heisman conversation. All right, y'all, so look, we only about 10 minutes away, and I can't lie, I'm getting pretty nervous. But obviously, I won't be able to record during the Heisman ceremony, so I'm just going to fill y'all in on everything that happened on the field throughout this season. But say, make sure to stay tuned to the end of this episode. That way, you can see your boy bring home that hardware. Say, man, the schedule makers didn't show us any love to start this season. You know, most teams' first game is against that pushover opponent that they just run the score up on. But nah, not us. We had two very tough matchups on the road. The first game was against a 1-0 South Carolina team that was coming off an eight-win season a year before. Now, we started off the game pretty flat and made a few mistakes that led to turnovers, but we didn't fold. We were able to drive the ball up the field and put some points on the board. South Carolina came out swinging and jumped out to a very big lead, so that meant it was time for me to take stage. Look, man, I came up clutch with a huge 40-yard bomb with just over a minute left before halftime, but the ref said I didn't get my feet down and it was called back. I don't know, man. Y'all tell me the play looked pretty clean and I felt like I was in bounds, but 
Anyways, it was on to the next. With just 49 seconds left in the first half, I would channel my inner Randy Moss pulling down a one-handed grab on the 36-yard reception, and then my guy Keon went on to seal the deal with a 13-yard touchdown. On the very next drive, Malik would break off a huge 52-yard run up the middle of the defense. Man, our offense has so many weapons, it just don't make no sense. But look, I would use one of the pointers I got from Devontae Adams over the summer on his touchdown. Knowing that the corner didn't have any help over the top, I pushed him to the middle of the field and then made a beeline to the back of the end zone for six. That wasn't it though. I was just getting started. Look, there's not too many corners on this earth that can run with me stride for stride. So if I ever catch you backpedaling, you might as well consider yourself cooked. On what would be the game winning touchdown, I would use my speed and run right past the defense yet again. Man, I was so hyped on this play, I damn near broke my controller. But say, man, there's no better way to pick up from last season and have a huge opening game versus a very tough opponent on the road. On just seven receptions, I went for over 250 receiving yards and three tutties. Of course, this performance will earn me player of the week. Man, look, we put hands and feet on Oregon. I mean, we literally stumped them boys out. Look, I ain't gonna lie to you. I didn't even play in the fourth quarter because the blowout was just that bad. I made a 78-yard house call in the second quarter, and that play just opened up the floodgates for a blowout win. My second reception of the game came with a huge hit by the safety, but I was still able to hang on for the 20-yard gain. I literally only had two catches this game, but I was still able to crack over 100 yards. The next week, we was back at the crib versus 0-2 Wyoming, and I picked up right where I left off the week before, scoring the easy touchdown on the out route to the back of the end zone. But say, man, I ain't even gonna lie, I don't know what was going on with me this game. I was having trouble hanging on and securing the ball, which obviously resulted in like three drop passes. Man, bro, I absolutely hate dropping the ball because that Butterfinger title is a very hard title to get rid of. But man, listen, we knew not to play with this Wyoming team. I mean, even though they were 0-2 to start the season, they were still very dangerous. And we couldn't afford an early upset, especially not at home and especially not against Wyoming. As a matter of fact, bro, where is Wy- You know what? Never mind. But look, we got the easy win at home, and it was finally time for the game I had been waiting for. Eastern Michigan University. Say, man, go do your research on the history between Anthony King and Eastern Michigan University. But look, they knew it was smoke, and I knew it was smoke. My quarterback, Peyton, came up to me before the game, and he let me know he already knew what time it was, so to be on the lookout for the ball. I struggled a bit early on, but I think it was just because my nerves were so high, and I was trying too hard. But it wouldn't be long before I settled down and jumped right back in my bag. Look, the first three years of my college career, I was considered a possession receiver with the ability to make big plays. Well, <laughs> I think it's safe to say now I'm a big play receiver with the ability to complete the very tough possessions. Man, I'll give credit where it's due. EMU came in and did exactly what I expected them to do. They rolled over on their biggest stage of the season and only ended the game with three measly points. Hey, man, I did my thing, though, scoring two touchdowns, six receptions for a buck fifty. Say, man, y'all should already know what's going on. Our first snow game of the season would come at home versus number six ranked Penn State. Man, I swear the temperature had to be like negative three degrees outside. Even with gloves on, I still couldn't feel my hands. But look, at this point of the season, I felt like we were on cruise control. What I mean by that is everyone was doing their jobs and taking care of their assignments. I honestly think this was some of the best team football we had played all season. But look, I went on to have my normal impact in this game, but it would be the other pieces surrounding me that stepped up and made some big plays. In this game, we would have a lot of success in our run game, which was a very big bonus because up until this point, honestly, our offense was pretty lackluster unless the ball was in the air. The game versus Purdue wasn't even really a game. I mean, honestly, it was more so like my highlight tape. See, it would be here that I would make my bid for the best receiver in college football. I showed everything in this game. My speed and quickness to outrun the defense, my hands and my ability to make the tough catch in traffic and high point the ball, and even my vision and my ability to turn what should have been a 5-yard reception into a 42-yard house call. Listen, I'm telling y'all, I'm really that dude. But hey man, the thing I want y'all to keep in mind is I'm putting up these big numbers and making these huge plays all within the offense. Yeah, I'm not out here just doing my own thing and running my own routes. No, I'm taking whatever is given to me and using my skill to create more. Yet again, I went on to put on video game like numbers. I really cracked 150 yards on only six receptions. But speaking of smoking crack, I officially cracked the Heisman watch list. As a matter of fact, I was the only receiver on the list at the time. Man, this was huge and all the added motivation I would need to fight through the second half of a tough season. We faced a bit of adversity versus a very solid 5-0 Iowa team at home. An early interception snatched the momentum out of what was shaping up to be a solid drive. 
I gotta say though, I'm proud of my guys. We didn't panic and credit to our defense who had their backs against the wall but still didn't even give up a field goal. Y'all should know I picked up right where I left off the game before. I became somewhat of a safety valve for our offense. When in need of a big play, look my way. But say, my guy KC would come up clutch with a huge 70-yard touchdown as he was able to torch the defense and give us our first lead of the day. It was my turn to put some points on the board, and y'all should already know, whenever my number gets called, I'm going to answer every time. I truly believe I had evolved into an unstoppable force. I mean, honestly, what could you do with me? My defense was way too good, and my strength was way too strong to try to press me. And even if you gave me a little bit of cushion, I could either high point you or burn you deep. Like, honestly, I became the total package. But look, man, we did them Hawkeyes dirty. We sent them boys packing back home with the big L. Yet again, I put up huge numbers on very few receptions. I mean, three tuds, 200 yards on seven receptions. Who else is doing that? Next, we took on Indiana on the road. And I think out of all the Big Ten schools, I definitely like their stadium the most. But listen, man, that game was over with before it even started. Honestly, it wasn't even really a game. It was nothing more than just another stage for me to show how good I was. As a matter of fact, I broke the school record for receiving touchdowns in a single season. At the halftime, we was up like 40 to nothing. I didn't even put my pads back on. I was on the sideline with a raincoat and a fully dressed hot dog chowing down. But look, man, after the game, the media let me know that I had finally taken a number one spot in the race for the Heisman. Bro, this couldn't have come at a better time because our next game was our biggest game of the season and I know everybody in the country will be watching. The Michigan vs. Michigan State rivalry is one of the best rivalries in college football. Even though I'm from the West Coast, I have been at MSU for two years now, so I have fully bought into the importance of this game. If you remember from last episode, Michigan beat us at home, ruining our perfect season and taking the bragging rights as the best team in Michigan. Well, <laughs> look man, I promised myself that wouldn't happen again. I was fully prepared to lay it all on the line and do whatever it took to secure the victory. But you'll notice the majority of these highlights are coming from the sideline point of view, right? Look, I don't know why, but I spent more time watching the game than actually playing in it. I wasn't in any type of trouble or injured at all, but for some reason I just wasn't in the game. and. Y'all know what happened the last time I questioned the OC about his play calling, so this time I kept my mouth shut and just took my spanking on my high knee like a man. I ain't gonna lie, bruh. Coming out versus Northwestern, I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder, and I was feeling some type of way towards the coaches because, honestly, of what happened the week before versus Michigan. I mean, why wasn't I on the field? Like, I mean, like, not only did we lose and fall all the way down to the number nine team in the nation, but all of my Heisman hype had died down as well. I think had I gotten an explanation, I would have felt better, but the coaches didn't say a word to me, so I was forced to come up with my own conclusion. And that conclusion was, they was hating on me and they didn't want to see me win. So hey, it was what it was. I promised myself that going forward, I was going to do whatever was best for me. Not the coaches, not the team, and not the fans. We went on to win the blowout game at home, and I would break yet another record for most career touchdowns as a Michigan State receiver. The final game of the season, we'd be on the road taking on Minnesota at their place. Now, we got off to a very quick start as my guy Malik busted a 68-yard reception on top of the D. Then Minnesota came right back and put seven points on the board. But look, our starting quarterback Peyton was out with the injury, so my guy Noah was stepping up and taking his place and leading the offense. Now, his inexperience proved to be an issue as he would throw two interceptions early in the first half. Y'all know normally I would have took responsibility for those interceptions, but... Nah, bro, the passes were actually severely underthrown. It would be all good, though, because regardless of how I felt about the coaching staff, I was still always going to have my team's back as that safety valve. I would catch a 27-yard touchdown, bringing us to within three, and then a few possessions later, my guy KC absolutely burnt the defense and completed a 65-yard reception, putting us right outside the end zone, and then my boy JB would take the two-yard handoff, giving us the lead. Now, we went on to win a pretty close game on the road, and we would officially end our season with a very impressive 11-1 record. Man, what a night. I still honestly can't even believe I'm here. But say, unfortunately I came in third place in the Heisman voting, so obviously that means I'll be going home empty handed. But it's okay though, I still made a name for myself in college football that'll last forever. Look, I don't know what the future holds, but I know for sure I'm not ready to hang up my cleats. So would y'all want me to continue this series into the NFL? Man, let me know down below. I'm on to the next one. Man, what do you mean behavior issues? Like, what are you talking about? I'm still trying to figure things out. Let me make a few calls, all right, and see what's going on. Man, look, all I know is I had a house full of people here just waiting to hear my name called. You promised I would go in the first round, Brian. All my connections had you coming off the board around 
10 or 12, okay? But look, I'm going to get to the bottom of this and see what's going on, all right? <sighs> yeah, all right. Man, it ain't no way it was four receivers in this year's draft that was better than me. I told everybody I would be the first skilled player taken off the board, but yet here I am undrafted at the end of day one. Say, bro, I did my thing this year. I mean, I put in real work. I didn't even tell y'all about the performance I had in the Rose Bowl or even show you all the trophies I took home. Man, as a matter of fact, let's get into it. Man, bro, it felt so good being back in LA. Look, we were set to take on the number 14 ranked Washington Huskies in the Rose Bowl. Now, this would be my first time playing back at home in like four years, so it was mandatory I put on a show. But say, I arranged for me and my pops to go grab lunch while I was in town. It had been a while since I had seen my guys, so it felt good reconnecting. Look, son, I'm not going to get into whatever you have going on with your mother, but I want you to know that woman loves you more than life itself. I mean, yeah, Pops, you say that and she says the same thing, but if I'm being honest, I've always felt some sort of resentment coming from her. And honestly, I felt like that since I was born. Her and I were going through our own things around the time you were born, and I take responsibility for that. But I want you to know, we are both very proud of you and your brother. Man, thank you, Pops. I really appreciate that. Look, y'all saw at the end of last episode that I didn't win the Heisman, but that didn't mean I was going home empty-handed. I ended up winning the Walter Camp Player of the Year Award, the Robert Maxwell Award, and the Blitnikoff. So how I see it, if you add those three trophies together, I mean, technically I won the Heisman. But say, man, I did my thing in a Rose Bowl. I mean, I'm talking about I was literally uncontainable. See, I knew coming into this game, the whole entire college football world would be watching. And also, this would be my final chance to show NFL scouts what I was made of before the draft. So I took center stage and played like my life was on the line. See, to start the game, the defense was in a man coverage, and I took that as disrespect. I didn't show no mercy to the opposing DB as I beat him deep on two huge bombs. And then they switched to a zone coverage, and <laughs> I did the same thing. But look, I scored the game-tying touchdown to send the game into overtime, where we would go on to win by three points off a 35-yard field goal. I had officially played in my last college football game, and I can't lie, bro, the feeling was bittersweet. But look, Mari flew into town with my son so he could have a chance to see me play live. Man, y'all don't even know how much that meant to me. But say, Babe had never been to LA, so I took them on a city tour. But when it was time for them to head back to Michigan, we got into a little bit of a fight. See, I wanted my son to come to Miami with me so he could watch me prepare and train for the combine, but apparently Amari didn't think that was a good idea. Anthony, he doesn't need to go with you to Miami. You won't even have time to watch him. Babe, listen, I'm telling you, I'm going to watch him. I mean, why would I not watch my son? Besides, I want him to see me train and get ready for the combine. He can see you train when you get back to Michigan. I'm telling you, it's not a good idea. Babe was right. I wouldn't have time to keep an eye on my shorty and train, so... I landed in Miami by myself. I used some of that NIL money I had to book a room at the Hilton, and then Big Bro paid for me to train with some of the best trainers on the planet, PXE Sports. I felt my football skills were already where they needed to be, so PXE set up a training program to focus on my overall strength and my speed. The main things I was concerned about was the bench press and the 40 yard dash at the combine. Well, <laughs> I did my thing on the bench press. I hit 24 reps at 225, and that landed me number one overall when it came to the receivers. Now, the 40-yard dash was a different story. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still put up a good time with the solid 4-4, but I honestly felt I could have did a little bit better. But say, y'all should already know the receiving drills were cake. I felt like my route running had improved over the break, so all I had to do was go out there and catch the ball. Now, the quarterback and I had a little bit of miscommunication on one rep, but it was no big deal. Other than that, I did my thing. But say, after all the drills were done, it was time for the one-on-one -on -one sit down to interview with the teams. And there, I felt like I handled myself very well. I mean, I responded confidently. I kept eye contact the whole nine. So I truly don't understand how I possibly slipped out the first round. Say, man, the past few weeks of my life have flown by like the flash. Between moving into a new place and the NFL training camp, bruh, I barely had time to sleep. But look, today's the big day. Yeah, the first NFL preseason game and my first time on the NFL field. But look, I still got a couple hours before I got to head to the stadium, so let me fill y'all in on everything that's changed since the last time we spoke. Your boy signed a four-year, $8 million deal with the Carolina Panthers. $6.8 million of that is fully guaranteed, and it came with a $3.4 million signing bonus. 
say, man, I officially secured the bag. But look, when I went to the Panthers headquarters to sign my contract, the team there let my agent know why I wasn't taken in the first round. And then of course he passed that message on to me. Now y'all remember that argument I had with the OC at EMU? Well, apparently Buddy had a lot of negative things to say about me to NFL scouts. I mean, dude said some things that I don't even feel comfortable repeating. But that along with the fact that I was considered a troubled youth due to my time I spent in juvenile, man, that made NFL scouts consider me as a high risk prospect. Man, I ain't gonna lie, it took everything in me not to go back to EMU and see Buddy, but I remember it was bigger than me now and I had a lot more to lose. But look, Charlotte's gonna be my home for at least the next four years, so it was time to go ahead and make it official. Babe and I found this super nice crib about 20 minutes away from the city. I mean, it's literally perfect. See, I like the more newer, modern type of feel, whereas Amari, she likes the more laid back type of vibe. Well, honestly, I feel like this place has a good mix of both. Not only that, but it has a spa and a sauna, which is gonna be perfect for my recovery during the season. Now, I know y'all saw the two toys sitting in the driveway, right? Yeah, man, I had to go ahead and get Babe that brand new Mercedes GLS. That was just a small token of my appreciation. I mean, she's been an amazing support system and she does a tremendous job with our shorty. Now, me on the other hand, I just grabbed a scatty. Yeah, man, your boy got the scat pack and threw some 4Gs on there. But look, man, before y'all even ask why I didn't get the Hellcat or the Demon, listen, they charging damn near two to three times what that car is worth right now. And honestly, bro, I just ain't got it. But maybe on my second contract. Anyways, it was finally time to report to training camp and I did my thing. I mean, I'll be honest, I still got a lot to learn. I know y'all probably was expecting me to say I was dominating every drill and I'm the best receiver on the team, but nah, that's not the case and I'm humble enough to admit that. But don't get it twisted. This time next year, I promise you it's gonna be a totally different story. All right, y'all, so look, I'm about to leave the crib and head over to the stadium. Now, since this is just the preseason, I decided to keep my outfit simple. But say, we really about to see if my talent can transfer over to the big leagues. I'd be lying to y'all if I said I wasn't nervous, but I'm confident in the fact that I put in all the work required to perform on the biggest stage. But say, man, thank y'all for taking this journey with me, and I appreciate all the love and support. I'll see you on the field. Coming out for my first NFL game, bro, I ain't even gonna lie, I was nervous as hell. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it was just football, and I've been playing this game since I learned how to walk. Now, early on, me and my guy, B. Young, had a bit of a miscommunication on my route, but no worries because I was able to connect on a nice 23-yard reception later on in the first quarter. And then on the very next play, I picked up the key block, helping secure the first down. But look, playing out of that slot receiver spot, I was able to find a wide open seam in the defense and catch a huge 36-yard bomb and then take it in for a tutty. Bruh, this was my first ever touchdown in the NFL. But listen, man, since this was just a preseason game, I was only able to play in the first quarter. I finished the game off with three receptions for 72 yards, and of course, I put one up top. Our next game, we'd be on the road in the Big Apple, taking on the New York Giants. Now, I'll be honest, bro, I struggled tremendously early on. A part of it was me trying to do way too much, and another part was my route running. See, at this point, I was still used to the college routes. They're much shorter, but here in the league, man, everything is extended an extra five to seven yards, so that took a little bit of time to get used to. But hey, man, that's what the preseason's for, right? When I was training with my bro and D. Adams, they gave me some game. They said the quickest way to get kicked out the league is to be invisible on the field. So if you ain't catching passes, you need to be blocking. So hey, I went out there and I did just that. I picked up the huge block that cleared a wide open lane for the halfback to find the end zone. But look, man, again, this was just the preseason, so I was only able to play in the first half. I only finished the game with four catches for 54 yards, which honestly wasn't too bad, but there still definitely needs to be a lot of improvements made if I'm going to become an elite receiver in the league. Say, man, it feels like forever since I last seen y'all boys. I honestly wasn't sure if y'all would want another episode, but hey, we back with another one. But listen, man, it's that time of year. Yeah, playoff time. Winner go home. We got a wild card game today against the San Francisco 49ers, and y'all should already know I'm looking to put on a show. But before we get to that, man, we got a lot of catching up to do as well. I not only need to bring you up to speed with everything that's happened in my first year in the league, but also we're going to tap into my bro's career as well. So if you haven't already, man, go ahead and smack that subscribe button and don't forget to like the video. Man, let's get into it. Man, bro, I've always heard people say the NFL is a full-time job, and I honestly figured they just meant, you know, staying in shape and taking care of your body. 
but nah, this game requires your full attention and most of your time. So I'm about to take y'all through what almost every day of my life has been like for the past 18 weeks. See, I start my day off with a cup of coffee at like 5.30 in the morning, and then I get dressed to meet my coach over at the track for some workouts. See, one of my goals to start this season was to increase my overall speed and quickness, and yeah, he's been helping me with that, but he also be having me do these crazy workouts. I think he forgets I still gotta go to practice later in the evening. But look, the most important part of my day is taking my shorty to school. It's crazy having a son, bro. He wanna be just like me. I mean, sometimes I catch him watching my every move so he can try to copy it later. Man, being a dad could be a trip sometimes. But anyways, yeah, after I get him to school, I head straight over to the team's facility for my daily meetings and film study. Bruh, don't get me wrong, I know film is important, but come on, man, I'm a receiver in a very uncomplicated offense. There's no reason for me to be watching tape for two and a half hours. And then after that, we gotta go down to the field for practice for another two hours. And then on some days, we got weights and physical therapy. Man, all of that combined is a lot. By the time I'm done with football, I'm, you know, normally drained, but I promise to give my family at home the same energy I give my family on the field. And you know what's crazy? Because if you were to ask me as a kid what my dream life would be, I'd probably describe exactly what I have now. I mean, a girl I can trust, a son that looks up to me, and a job I love. You know, the American dream. Man, so as y'all can see, me and bro are living polar opposite lives. I swear, Amari be blowing my phone up if I stay out past 10. Meanwhile, this man falls asleep in a club on a Tuesday night. Hey, I guess you can do as you please when you young, rich, and single. But look, as y'all know, bro is a few years older than me and he's already been in the league for several years now. Also, the contract he signed was massive, especially compared to mine's. Anyways, I say all that to say, it's clear bro has gotten very comfortable. I mean, it seems like he's more in love with the lifestyle and the perks of being an NFL player than the actual job itself. It wasn't long until his comfort and complacency caught up with him and it started to affect his play. Well, that eventually led to big bro being benched midway through the season. I mean, it was almost like somebody flipped a switch. See, at the start of the season, Reggie was making incredible plays. I mean, he was fitting the ball into places that only his target could get to. He was leading the league in yards and touchdown passes, but like I said, that all seemed to change. The next five games or so, Big Bro started to resemble Jamarcus Russell. I mean, every game was filled with multiple interceptions and unforced turnovers. All that love he was getting his first few years in the league quickly turned to hate. And then shortly thereafter, that starting job he had was no longer his. Big Bro took losing his starting job really hard, and I mean, I get it. Since we've been playing football, this is his first time not being a star of the team, so I'm sure it's been a pretty tough adjustment. But it's his last year of his rookie contract, so maybe he can get a fresh start with a different franchise next season. Anyways, with today being a playoff game, I know them cameras is going to be out, so I'm here trying to find myself something to wear. While I do that, man, let me take y'all through everything that transpired between me and my mom and show you how I performed on the field this season. So look, at the end of the preseason, I flew to LA for like three days. You know, just to tap back in with my family and relax a little bit before the regular season. Y'all know once that starts, I ain't gonna have time to do nothing else but play football. But anyways, while I was there, I went to visit my old high school in Inglewood. Man, you come a long way. I remember trying to keep you and your brother out of trouble. You were both so young, dumb, and full of cum. Man, coach, I can't even lie to you. I miss those days. Everything was so simple. You know, just go to school and play football. Now I got all these responsibilities and problems, plus everybody relying on me. It just gets stressful sometimes. Well, you know, son, God will never give you more than you're capable of handling. Now you've got the opportunity of a lifetime, and all you have to do is not blow. As a matter of fact, I got some people I want you to meet. Man, coach had me go up and speak to some of the players on the team. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, bro. I got pretty emotional while I was up there. See, I can remember sitting in those same seats listening to the alumni speak to us just a few years ago. Now look, I'm the one they up here listening to. Man, I swear, talking to them and walking through those old halls was like a trip down memory lane. Not only that, but it was also a reminder of why I started playing the game in the first place. Anyways, man, before I left town, my mom asked to take me out to lunch so we can discuss this business proposal she pitched to me on the night I got drafted. I'll be honest, initially I was a little bit leery, but I was still open to hearing what she had to say. So son, what do you think? And be honest, what, what are your thoughts on the offer? I mean, everything sounds good, mama, but as you know, I've already got an agent, and honestly, I've been pretty happy. Not only that, he said he's got a lot of big deals in the work for me. Oh, come on, Anthony, don't fall for the okie doke. I taught you better than that. 
You know these guys, they make a lot of promises just to keep you around me while they sucking you dry. Besides with me, not only will you be saving money, but the proof is in the pudding. I mean, look at the deal I just landed your brother. <sighs> Mama, I'm not Reggie. Our situations are totally different. I know that, son. Look, just give me a little bit of time to think things over. I'll talk about it with Mari, and I'll get back to you with my decision. So as y'all can see, me and my mom's relationship is still pretty rocky, but we definitely in a better place than we were before. But look, she recently opened her own consulting firm, and who better to be her first two clients than her son's playing in the NFL? See, Reggie immediately fired his agent and hired my mom once she got her license, but I wasn't going for it. My decision not to hire my mom as my agent seemed to cause more tension in our relationship, but I was okay with that. It's my responsibility to protect my career, so I'm going to do whatever's best for me, even if that means upsetting the people that I love at the same time. Man, for some reason, I was more nervous my first regular season game than I was the entire preseason. I honestly don't even know why. I mean, I guess it was because the game was finally real and they actually mattered now, but like I mentioned before, man, the NFL is a lot different than college at the receiver position. See, while I was in college, I became used to having to run my exact route, whereas in the NFL, nah, man, you basically encouraged to break off your route and find gaps in the defense. Although there was a little bit of a rough transition early on in training camp and the preseason, man, I came out game one versus the Falcons and did my thing. I finished the game with seven big receptions for 109 yards, and we take the early W on the road. Our first home game of the season would come week two versus the Saints. It would be in this game that we showed the entire NFL just how dangerous our offense could be. Now, although I didn't score a touchdown this game, I was still able to make a huge impact by beating the defense over the top for huge gains. Now, my boy Adam Thielen, man, that's a different story. He was able to turn the clocks back a bit by breaking off several tackles for like a 50-yard gain, but unfortunately, a fumble on the next play led to a Saints touchdown. All my early morning workouts with my track coach came to light in this game, and they proved to be paying off. I mean, any time they played me in man coverage, I ran straight past the defender. As a matter of fact, now that I really think about it, I don't think I got jammed at the line all season. Y'all know the saying, man, slow feet don't eat. Well, if that saying is true, then I must got a full plate. But anyways, man, we went on to get our first win at home, and I walked away with eight catches for 148 yards. Hey, man, listen, I need y'all to hear me out on this because I mean it from the bottom of my heart. The hardest game I played all season came against the Seattle Seahawks. Look, I know the original players of the Legion of Boom are no longer there, but bruh, their spirit definitely lives on. I mean, I got beat up all game. It didn't matter if I had the ball or not. Them boys was laying that D on me thick. After the game, I needed a damn hot tub and a back rub. But unfortunately, I still wouldn't see the end zone even though I had seven receptions on the day. The game would come down to the wire and in the last few seconds of regulation, B. Young would find my boy Adam Thielen in the back of the end zone, giving us the one point lead and the win at home and proving our record to 3-0 on the season. Week 4 at home versus the Minnesota Vikings, man, it finally happened. I would officially score my first NFL touchdown off of a post route. Now, I did take a big hit at the goal line, but I still managed to hang on to the ball for six. This moment would be huge for me, not only because Amari and my son were there, but my pops flew in for the game as well. But that wasn't it though. I still had a huge impact all throughout the game and without the ball. See, I remembered the advice D Adams and my bro gave me before I got drafted and I've been putting it to use ever since. Now, the Vikings didn't roll over though. Yeah, things turned into a shootout and I was totally up for the challenge. With just a little over two minutes left in the first half, man, I let my guy B Young know to look my way and I pulled in a huge head tap on top of the defense putting us in position to score. And then two plays later, man, we did just that. My big bro, Miles Sanders, took advantage of the one-on-one -on -one coverage and pulled in a huge touchdown at the back of the end zone, giving us the one-score lead before the half. My confidence was at an all-time high after scoring my first touchdown, so I was looking to make plays wherever I could. Well, that confidence would come back to bite me as I called for the ball right outside the end zone, not seeing the safety creeping, waiting on the interception. Man, Buddy made a house call off that interception, and we went on to lose the game by six points. Jumping ahead to week 10 of the season, the team was rolling and we were looking to make a playoff push. Now, at this point, I had already established myself as the number one threat in our offense, and I was the clear front runner for rookie of the year. Look, my route running had improved drastically over the season and my hands as well. Not only that, but I had also become a deep threat within our offense. I mean, all in all, I honestly was the total package. But look, we had a Thursday night primetime game on the road versus the Chicago Bears, and like normal, I did my thing. But see, the thing that makes me different than any other receiver in the league is I don't need a lot of looks to put up big numbers. I think in this game, I was targeted nine times, and out of those nine times, I caught seven passes for a buck fifty. 
Now, this is what has me concerned going into the playoffs. See, in our last game of the season, we took on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home. Although we did have a few key players out for this game, we still came out very flat and almost borderline confused. And it's crazy because the defensive scheme wasn't anything we hadn't seen before and our offensive playbook hadn't changed at all, but for some reason we were still completely out of sync. Well, this miscommunication led to several mishaps throughout the game, including a few interceptions. I did everything I could to try to keep us in the game and honestly the team fought back pretty strong. I'm just hoping that the performance that we had in that game doesn't transfer into today's wildcard game versus the 49ers. But look man, we went on to lose against the Bucks 24 to 17. I had a crazy day, 13 receptions for 200 yards and one tutty. Hey man, I had a hell of a season if you ask me, but of course, we still got more work to do. Say man, looking back over this season made me realize just how far we've come. I mean, y'all really been rocking with me since my freshman year in college. Well, the time is finally here. My first NFL playoff game. Y'all know normally my nerves would probably be all over the place, but nah, not this time. I'm focused and I'm confident that we have what it takes to go all the way. Millions of people all around the world are going to be tuned into this game, so let's go put on a show. versus the 49ers the game plan was to attack the secondary with quick passes see towards the end of the regular season we had a running back change with chuba hubbard taking over the starting role and since then defenses have had no choice but to stack the box only making it easier for us to make plays on the outside but look midway through the first quarter bryce young was able to find my guy it for the huge game and then chuba hubbard was able to score the first touchdown of the game with a two-yard run after a forced turnover by our defense, we started off our next drive with amazing field position. On a run pass option, Bryce Young made a great read for a touchdown to our tight end coming off the line, giving us a 14-0 lead going into the second quarter. At the start of the second quarter, I felt that was the perfect time for me to make my presence felt. I was able to find a huge hole down the seam of the defense and Bryce put the ball right on the money. Now this was officially my first touchdown in the postseason of my career and I'm for sure gonna do whatever it takes to make sure it's not my last. As a matter of fact, on the very next possession, the same exact route, I would come up with similar results. See, I tried telling y'all, it don't matter if you press me or if you give me cushion, I'm gonna make a play regardless. Especially if I'm able to get that inside release, man, consider yourself cooked. But look, man, at this point, we was doing them boys dirty and things started to get out of hand. Now, I was able to come down with one more catch before the end of the game for like 30 yards. But say, man, we beat the brakes off the 49ers and now we'll be moving on to the divisional round. I had a hell of a showing finishing with 159 yards and two touchdowns only on five receptions. Like I've been telling y'all since the start of this series, man, I'm really that dude.